Hey guys, I'm going to take a look at measuring the free air resonance of a loudspeaker. That measurement to me kind of pre-qualifies if the driver should be used in a sealed or a ported enclosure. And that's just one parameters out of several that are called teal and small. Well, a couple of guys, Neville Teal, pronounced with a T, and Richard Small, oh, probably back in the 60s, they figured out how to measure the parameters of all these loudspeakers we have. And nowadays you can download software for free, or there's probably even websites online you can go to and enter all those numbers in, and it'll spit out the proper size of cabinet and ports and all that good stuff even if you're doing transmission lines or or horns type enclosures and things like that you can figure all that out with these parameters well it would take a pretty long video and it's fairly involved to measure those things you know without the proper equipment so I'm just concentrating on free air resonance because like I say it's kind of a pre-qualifier. I should mention that for about $100 US you can buy a device that plugs into a US, uh, USB port on your computer and it has software and it can actually measure all of the parameters for you and you know give you the box size and port lengths and all that good stuff and even has extra features like I guess they have tone generators and uh, some of the newer ones have little handy little uh, oscilloscope mode so yeah if you have a lot of speakers to measure that might be worth it really well worth it I do buy my drivers new often and uh, they already have the parameters so I don't have really have much of a use for that but every once in a while I get a driver and I just want to see how it would work you know or if it would work in a ported or sealed closure better so I want to find out by finding the free air resonance and I have a friend who is going to mod some speakers and this might help him out as well Okay, let's move ahead here and see how we measure that. Well, it's very easy to do. And you might say, you know, I, I don't have all this stuff. Do I have to buy a bunch of stuff? Not really. Well, you need a signal source, and that could be a music player, a computer. And to generate the signal, you just need software like Audacity that's free. And um, then you might say, well, I can't measure the frequency. How do I do that? Well, one trick I do is create a waveform or waveform sweep. Or I should say a frequency sweep from 0 to, we'll say, 120. 0 to 120 hertz. And make the length of that sweep 0 to 120 seconds. So if it's 120 seconds long, you know exactly at what point in time the frequency is because at say 40 seconds you'll have 40 hertz 90 seconds 90 hertz and so on and so forth so you can hit pause when you find the peak resonance and right there you know now I should say that these are small signal parameters so you don't need a big amplifier you know just little headphone player you know the headphone out on your computer well I'm going to use a small amplifier because my function generator which I'm going to use doesn't have low enough impedance like a headphone output circuit would so that's what I'm going to use you want to use a resistor about the same impedance of the speaker. 8 ohm speaker, grab an 8 ohm, 8 ohm resistor. And it's not rocket science, it doesn't have to be exact. 
10 ohms is pretty common, so you can use that. Then you want to connect a meter across the output. All you have to do is just play your tone or adjust the frequency and watch the meter. At peak resonance, the voltage across the speaker will go to a certain peak level and as the frequency increases, it'll go back down. So in other words, you know, as your frequency starts out, it'll be low, then it'll go up to like a peak level and then come back down. That peak is the free air resonance of the speaker. And I should mention that you have to do this test with the speaker out of the cabinet. It can't be inside the cabinet or anything like that. Technically, it should be suspended away from objects, you know, suspended in the air, but it'll work just fine this way. And I'm just going to use the oscilloscope because it really, you know, you can really see what's going on with the increasing waveform and such. All right, go ahead and take the measurement. Okay, have the function generator turned on here. Watch as I increase the frequency. It went up and now it's going back down again. So I'll try to find the peak. Around. Seems to be around <laughs> Snickers. Snickers invited himself to this party. I will say it's about 29 hertz or so. Okay, so what does that mean? Is this speaker, speaker good for um, sealed or ported enclosures? Well, at that frequency, it's meant for ported. A sealed driver, I would like to see the free air resonance be around um, 20 hertz or so. So somewhere in the range of the upper teens to 24 hertz or so. This because of the resonance is so high you're not going to get a lot of deep bass in a sealed enclosure. And the reason for that is because in a sealed enclosure the trapped air acts as a spring and with the speaker in that type of enclosure it increases its resonance. So a properly sized sealed box with a, um, a driver such as this, you know, about 29, 30 hertz, it put its resonance up in the mid 50s. And eh, it's a little too high for a sealed enclosure. A little too high for a subwoofer. So what happens is your when you go below your resonance of the speaker, it starts to roll off the base. If you think think of it as a graph, the base will start to roll off. And in a sealed enclosure, the that roll off is more gentle than a ported enclosure, but at 50 some hertz, you're not going to get a real good deep bass. On the other hand, if you put a speaker that had a free air resonance in of say like 18 hertz in the properly sized box you would get the roll off down in the upper 30s and again that general roll off is going to get you you know good extension into the 20 hertz range in a sealed enclosure and a lot of audio files like sealed enclosures I'm somewhat partial to them any speaker that sounds good is fine by me but after trying a few sealed type subwoofers and you know ordinary speakers, really like the sound. I just kind of gravitated towards them. Now with a ported speaker, you know this was around 30 hertz, we'll say 29, 30 hertz. So I would put it in a ported enclosure and tune it to around that. You can certainly tune it lower. I wouldn't go too much higher because it would start to peak the bass up. But 
that peak would be where the bass feels more powerful. You, you don't want to peak your bass like at 70 or 80 hertz, then it starts to sound boomy. But if you peak your bass up a little in the 40 hertz range, 40 to 50, it sounds more powerful. And I, that I like. But I don't want to get off on a tangent and talk too much about that. Just uh, mainly hear how to figure the uh, free air resonance of a loudspeaker driver. And that's it. Thanks for watching.